Writer Victor Hugo said these were the most beautiful of peaks. You might have already guessed by the red colour of the rock that this range was formed from a volcanic eruption. Today, this rugged terrain is covered in lush greenery. We're getting closer to the summit so you can see the ruins. There are 32,000 hectares of mountains in total, all lining the Mediterranean coast. This is the Red Arch, the door to the 4th century sanctuary of Saint-Honorat. You can see the islands of Lérins and Saint-Honorat in the distance. Just a few more steps and we're there. This is the secret grotto where the hermit retreated to, before creating the famous Lérins monastery. It's become a place of pilgrimage for people. Everyone brings their own little stone or a photo. It's a challenge to get up here, but once you arrive, you have this reward. You can find some calm. You can meditate and pray in peace. But it's not just pilgrims that have been drawn to this region. Between two voyages, the writer Antoine de Saint-Exupéry came here to stay at his sister's house in the family's Agay castle. At the statue erected in honour of his fictional hero, the Little Prince, we're meeting the author's nephew, Fred Daguet. He fell in love with his Terrell as a small child. He always loved those landscapes and this very particular feeling on this stretch of coast. It's easy to imagine the author relaxing by the sea, with his feet often in the water but there's very little left of his sister's castle where he came to stay. So these are the old ramparts of the castle erected in 1635, 1636 by our first ancestor who built Ege. The writer found it hard to tear himself away from this place. He became a pilot during the Second World War and was gunned down near here during a reconnaissance mission. But before vanishing into the waters of the Mediterranean, he flew one last time over his beloved family castle. From the sky, he may well have spotted this road called the Golden Corniche. It was built at the start of the 20th century to make it easier for tourists to come here by car. When we set off in the morning and we know we're going to head out on this road, we know we're going to have a good day. This coastal road was completed in 1903 and became an instant success, making it possible to drive from Cannes to Saint Raphael in just one day. So here we have the most beautiful view. This is the best spot because you can see the whole range. All of Esterel is here. If only the road would extend into the sea. Down below, there are just extremely steep coves, coves that are only accessible from the sea. But the road comes to an end here, in Lana Pool, the ramparts of a medieval fortress. The Clues, a couple of American artists, bought this site back in 1918 and renovated the ruins into this fairy tale castle we see today. So you've just stepped into a museum and you're welcomed by the sight of this elephant, which is made out of recycled tires. This elephant is a tribute, perhaps, to the wild animals that roamed through these gardens alongside other beasts. We have this cloister which was carved by Henry Clues and it features all these imaginary creatures. The castle itself is a work of art with this incredible view. The couple chose this castle to be their home for eternity. They're both buried here. They made one particular demand, which was that their tombs should remain open so their souls could meet every 100 years. The couple bequeathed the castle to other artists as a kind of Villa Medici. That's my key to the studio. Marcus is a New York-based artist. He's come here for a month to work on this sculpture which is made out of fishing nets. 
It's so beautiful, it's open light, uh, you have all the air. It's very easy to be an artist here. We really get a fantastic opportunity. It's really inspiring. With a dash of cobalt blue from the Mediterranean and a splash of red from the peaks, the Esterel Mountains become perhaps the most beautiful of paintings.